is good, Grey Gang? We're out here today. We're inside the goat pen, so if you see a goat running around, that's why. But not only are we in the goat pen, but we're also on the bow range. If you can't see that, it's bow target. Just saying. And down here, we have my bow. Check that bad boy out. Now, if you guys don't know, I live in Kentucky, and Kentucky actually has one of the earliest bow seasons out of any state. By the time you're watching this, season's probably already started because hopefully I've already killed one. Anyways, at this point in time right now, we still have about 20 days until season comes in. So that gives me about 20 days to get out here, make sure my bow is shooting perfectly, and that I'm ready to go with it. Now, is that gonna happen? I don't know. Now, I have actually not touched this bow since about March. You know what? I don't exactly know what to expect. I don't even remember if it's sighted in. Last thing I shot with it was a pig, and I, uh... I didn't kill it, so that's not a good sign. It's that video right there, just in case you haven't seen it. It was a good video, we just, uh, well, we didn't get the job done. I'll show you the gear I'm using and all that fancy stuff. Here we go, pretty basic true ball release. It's pretty, this is actually a really cheap one, but I really like my strap that bad boy on my right hand. Next up for the finder range, it's a Bushnell prime something i don't know it works good though right here right now we're about 32 yards so i'll just stand up here and make it 30. the bow i'm using is a bow i bought like three or four years ago it's a hoyt thanks a lot hoyt for not sponsoring me <laughs> and then the arrows are extremely cheap ones i found on amazon but you know what they work for me and that's awesome and they're like 550 grit ow i just hit myself in the head with an arrow the side i'm using is an axle accu hunter it's a one pin sight and i kind of like it. it makes me feel cool when i shoot it so i'm gonna just dial it into 30 Hope that it's sided in, but we're about to find out right here, right now. So, just get ready, okay? I'm about to bring the heat. Just letting y'all know that in advance. All right, boys, we're about 30 right here, so let the carbon fly. Now, you may be looking over there at my target and saying, Kittle, dude, there is, some, there is some large creatures right behind your target. Are you sure you could shoot at it? And here's the thing, Gerald. That is Scott, which is an emu. And, uh, you know, if I miss, I may kill Scott. But, you know, we're just going to hope that I don't miss. Because that's a pretty big target. It's like four foot tall, dude. All right, here we go. Watch out, Scott. If you get hit, it's your own fault. Here we go. Make sure I got my good anchor point. Slow release, make sure everything's good. All right, now we'll shoot two more, get a three-shot group, and see how it goes. Last one. This is one for all the marbles. Let's go check it out. Now, from here, it looks okay. We are 30 yards away. Ooh! Boys, that looks about terrible from 30 yards. Guess I got my left and right down, but that is not okay. Here's my hand for comparison. That's sad. And I mean, a group like that's nothing to do with the bow. That's 100% me. Anyways, in the meantime, how you doing, Scott? How you doing? Now, there is two of them, and only one of them's named Scott. But I'll be honest with you, I can't tell them apart. Round two. Here we go. It ain't looking good. I'll just be honest with you. Um, all right, so that grouping's not terrible, but here's the thing. Last shot, the arrows were up and down. Right now, they're a little bit to the right. From what I can tell, I think my bow is sighted in. I'm just not super consistent with it. So I think all I need to do now is not really change the sights at all, just shoot a bunch of arrows. And that's exactly what I'm about to do. I'm not gonna film it all, cause you know, it's pretty much the same thing over and over and over and over. And but yeah, I'm gonna do that. And then right here in a minute, right here this evening, I think we're gonna do something pretty interesting that can really help me and whoever else has a bow get a lot of practice in a really, really fun way. I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but we're building a 3D bow range. Okay guys, it's actually the next day cause it started raining yesterday. But as you can see behind me, we have a few 3D targets that we're going to be setting up. The first one we have is this Morel Bionic Buck. Morel actually helped us out on a few of these targets. Not all of them, unfortunately, but they did help us out on this one. We've actually shot this one before, but as you can see, we've really not shot it a ton yet. This is a pretty cool target. It's our deer target. Down here, we have a company that shall not be named Turkey Target. Pretty much, you want to shoot them like right here or right here. But since it's a target, they put the side targets right there, which I mean, you can't shoot them there, I guess. I kind of like this thing because it's got teeth. Now I give them about three days before they fall out and I lose them on the ground, but that's beside the point as well. And I mean, yeah. Then we have a bionic bear. This one's also from Morel. I like these because they're not just foam. So you're not just going to shoot them into pieces. It's like a shooting bag. So like, hopefully it'll be more durable, but we're going to be shooting it for a long time. So that's going to be awesome. Then over here, we have a bobcat. Now this is a gigantic bobcat compared to real life. 
And it's also a very weirdly colored bobcat for real life. So because of that, I'm gonna do a little bit of art on it and put my artistic twang on it. Now as you can see, it's kind of cleared out down here. And that's because of one big reason. I'm actually in my goat pen. So they come through here and clear everything out. That's why a lot of these little trees don't have leaves on them and there's not vines everywhere. Which is perfect, because I need it to be cleared out so I can actually come down here and shoot. I've also chose here because during, whenever it's hot, whenever the sun's shining, I'll be okay here because it's completely in the shade. And it's out of the sun, which will make my targets last a little bit longer. Now you may look around here and there and see that there's some of these, because I've actually planned this out, okay? I've had these literally here for like four months just waiting for this day to set these up. Our first location is gonna be right over here. I've had it marked off for a while. And as I picked out these locations, I made sure that some were small targets up close, bigger targets out distance, harder targets, easier targets, angles. Anyways, for the first target, it's just gonna literally go right here. It's very simple, very easy, it's over. Game over. I'm gonna put them pins in the ground, stick this guy in the ground, and we'll be on our way. Then we'll move on to the turkey target. The turkey is actually gonna sit right there. I'll see you guys in about an hour. All right, guys, we're back here. It took us a long time to set up those targets. We gotta be really quiet, guys, because I think we got a howling coyote right there. Can you see it? You see? Y'all see it? Let me get out my rangefinder. We'll see a bit how long it is. According to my rangefinder, he's exactly 19 yards. So I'm gonna come in here and clock him in for exactly 19 yards. Shoot I'm just going to aim right behind the shoulder. Shoot him in the face. No, I ain't doing that. Right behind the shoulder, he's going down. You ready? Yep. You on him? Yep. Oh, he's dead, dude. He's dead. I maybe hit him like an inch high, but it's fine, dude. He's he's going down. Dude, do you see that thing? Look at that buck. That's an elk, ain't it? He's a monster. Is that that's elk? A, that's a mule deer. Oh, he's 36 yards. This is going to be a decent little shot right here. Oh, he's deader than a hammer, dude. He's deader than a hammer. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Look back behind me. It's a bobcat. Can y'all see that? Right up against that tree. Can you see it? Yep. Better take him out. Dude. He gonna take he gonna take Kanye out. Dude, he's right beside my chickens. I gotta kill. I literally got a turkey right there. And if I don't take him out, he's gonna take him out. He's twenty nine. You know what he's about to be though? Dead. Dead. You on him? Yep. Oh, I bet. I think he's dead. You got him. He didn't go twenty. All right, now I'm out of arrows. He's a stinking Brazilian turkey right there. You ready? You ready? Stay right here, stay right here. Hey. Stinking smoking, dude. Stinking smoking. Check out this bad boy. Honestly, that's exactly right, I aiming. It's a good shot. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, he's dead. Dude, you knocked the teeth out of this old son. I know, dude. Okay. Knocked his teeth out. <laughs> Perfect. Let's go check out my deer. Now, this is a rare deer, okay? <laughs> this one's a rare one. He's, uh, he's double jointed. As you can tell, double jointed bionic buck, but you know what's more important than he's double jointed? He's dead. He's dead. That's exactly right. Lord have mercy, there's a burr, son. He's a stinking burr. Yeah, way up through there. You see it? That's where we started from. Yeah, come back here. I'm gonna shoot him these 50 yards away. Oh. That's a long shot, but you think, okay, G can do it. What'd I say? 50. 60? 50. Oh, think I can do it? Oh. All right, get ready. This one's a big one. Sandy. I do not know where my arrow hit. But it did hit the bear. It did hit the bear. I'm going to send one more. Just as an intimidation factor, if nothing else. I'm just going to be honest. From what I can see from here, those are both pretty terrible. But... You did hit the bear. I did hit the bear. And he is not attacking us. Which is the main thing that matters. That's, As for this kid... He's dead. He's dead. Ah! Dang, what is up with these the targets? Why do they make them so hard to get out? They have no chill ever! Dude, they, there's three bears. They're stinking three, four bears, and they're closing in fast, dude. They, these got horns, dude. You on him? Yep. 
That looked like a good shot. I think it's dead. It ain't running nowhere, so I technically dropped it. So the 30 yard shot was pretty well perfect. Yet the 50 slash 45, which we don't really know which one it was, still, they were definitely a bit too high, so. You'd have dropped him, you'd hit him in the spine. Yeah, but you can't really rely on that. Basically what I'm saying is that 35 and under, I'm comfortable with. Once it starts stretching out to 50, obviously I don't wanna take a real animal like that. But now we only have one thing left. My bow is sighted in. I'm decently comfortable with it. All I have to do is train some more off camera while, while season's still coming in. And then I'll catch you guys opening day of season. Okay guys, it is absolutely not the first day of deer season, not the opening day. Yes, I'm on a new camera. This is my smaller camera that I can really get and move around in. The reason we're going with this one is because even though it's not opening day of deer season, we're still going deer hunting. Right here we have my climbing tree stand. This thing allows me to climb trees without a ladder at any time I want to. It's pretty epic. Right there's my bow, it's on the ground, and over here's my back with all my stuff in it, including my arrows. Speaking of my arrows, I'm using the same ones I used at the end of last year, and check out the broadhead I'm using. That thing's a stinking meat stick. It's a 150 grain broadhead with like a 100 grain insert. So this thing is heavy, which is good because that's what my bow really likes to shoot. Now I'm about to head into the woods, but before I do, I know what you're saying. Kendall dude, why are you wearing a red shirt deer hunting? And that's a good point. I'm wearing a red t-shirt because it's stinking hot out here because it's stinking September or something. I don't know. But to counteract that, I have the super lightweight KG ghillie suit. As you could imagine. Look at the little Kendall Grape one of the shop for But for real, guys, it actually is really good, especially for hunting like this because it's super lightweight. It's not going to sweat me out because it's going to be hot today. And it even doubles as a mosquito net. So if the bugs get bad, this thing will help keep them off. And... Just like that, my upper body is now camo. This right here is gonna be plenty enough camo for a deer, especially when I'm pretty high up in a tree. As for now, guys, I'm gonna turn off the camera. That's because I have to figure out a way to pack my tree stand, my backpack, and my bow all into the woods. And believe it or not, guys, I only have two arms. All right, guys, we made it to the location. Check it out, that's some good looking woods, okay? And here's the reason I came here, even though I've never hunted here in my entire life. And I've only been here once. There are a bunch of oak trees up here. If you don't know what an oak tree is, it's the tree that leaves nuts like these. This is an acorn. Deers love them. And right now, the squirrels are all over the trees and the acorns are falling off. Therefore, right here in this area with all these oak trees, there is a ton of acorns on the ground, which deer are just walking all over the place eating them. So this is literally a natural food plot. Long story short, there's a lot of acorns on the ground and the deer are ready to eat them. When I was walking up to the spot, I couldn't help it, but I spooked a few deer right over the hill. And this may just be me, but I think they have a pretty good chance of coming back. I mean, if they're hungry enough, they're gonna come back. All right, guys, here's my climbing tree stand. I'll just put on the head cam, and I'll kind of show you guys how I'm putting it up and just, you know, how it works overall. It's a really great concept. They can be a little dangerous because a lot of people don't do it properly. They don't climb properly. They forget their fundamentals. But first things first, we're going to go ahead and get this thing on the tree in order to start climbing. I'll reach around here, grab this. Oh, and then I'll get it locked in right about here, right here on the tree, right about there. You can see that it's at an angle, but the thing is that once you get up the tree, the tree is gonna get thinner, so then it should flatten out about perfect. As for the next one, we're gonna put it on the same exact way, but above it. And then we're gonna connect this, which connects both of them so that none of them can fall without the other. It's a little redundancy thing so that it's as safe as possible. And before I actually get up in the tree, I'm gonna strap myself to the tree so that if the both tree stands fail, I'm still connected to the tree so I won't fall and die like many has before me. This one's a lot easier because I can just walk it around the tree like this. Now I'm come up here, connect this strap anyway. As long as it's connected, that's what matters. Now I'll go over here, get my stuff, put on my harness, and we'll start the climb. Once I'm up in the stand, next step, get my safety rope. Wrap this bad boy around the tree and do not negotiate. Never unhook yourself from the tree until you get to the bottom. No exceptions. And there we go. I can wrap it around the tree. I can grab my hook, which should be back here. Here we go, hook myself in. Now I'm locked in. And even if this entire tree stem fell, this rope and this harness should keep me from hitting the ground at the bottom. And as I climb with the tree stand, I just move this up like this. Not a problem at all, not a hassle at all, but it really could save my life if things go south. And things do go south, and they go south very fast. All right, boys, here we go. Let's start climbing.
All right, now you may notice we've came up to a problem. We got a little tree. That's okay because in my backpack, which I unfortunately forgot at the bottom, I have a hacksaw. So uh, yeah, now I get to pull it up. <laughs> it's a little early. I wasn't expecting this. I forgot. I saw the limb I was gonna have to cut. I'm not gonna grab the limb though. I'm just gonna come in here, grab this KG hatchet. I'm gonna let this go right back down to the bottom. Just like that. Yeah, sure, just like that. Now I'm coming here. Take the hatchet, I'm gonna hack this tree away. Then I should have a clear way up all the way through the top, or as far as I'm wanting to go. Dang it, that's not good. By golly son, I tell you what, that is a stinking job. Nevertheless, I am up in the tree, and this is my view. I've got all this clean woods right here in front of me. And there's acorns dropping on every single bit of it. But here's the thing, guys. I do know that there's a wind to my back. Therefore, there's probably nothing going to be coming directly in front of me. Just because it doesn't matter how much scent killer I put on, they're still going to smell me if they're downwind. And I understand that. And with that being said, I literally have two options. I have this side, which is a pretty good trail coming right up through there. And then I have this side. This side, I think, is going to be my sweet spot because there's also a couple trails over there and there's a lot of acorns been dropping over there. And I've been watching that. Plus, that is where I heard the deer hurt. Well, I gotta say it, dude. Look how much I'm sweating. It is a stinking job to get up. I remember a couple years ago when I first got this climbing stand, I would climb and then by the time I'd get up in the tree, I'd be ready to go home. Like, I'd be sweating way more than this because I wanted to stay camo so I'd wear long sleeves and I would literally burn up. Luckily with this thing, I can wear short sleeves and then just slip this over my arms and it not weigh anything because it's just so thin. You can see it right there. Same for my pants, but as for now, I'm in pretty good shape. Got my backpack and fanny pack hanging and I got my bow hanging over here. So as for now, go ahead and put my release on, get my head cam ready in case one gets close. Okay guys, I'm back at the Defender right now. Long story short, right there at the end, that weird looking buck started coming right back into range. Could have shot him, but once again, I saw that he was the small buck. I don't want that. Then I looked on out there behind him, did see a doe, but it was getting really dark. I couldn't do anything about her. One thing leads to another, I'm coming back in the morning. Okay guys, it is the morning and I am here. I'm out here, everything's good. The acorns are still dropping. I did actually spook one deer. As I was walking in, not sure if it was a buck or doe, it's too dark, but there's really nothing I can do about that, man. I mean, the only thing I could have done different is like come in at four o'clock or something. And I'll just be honest, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't doing that. I'm just trying to get some meat, man. I ain't trying to kill the biggest buck in the world. I'll catch you guys if anything happens. Hopefully, if anything comes in except for that little bitty buck, I'll probably be trying to take the shot. Another deer that never got close enough. All I could see is its head just way out there. So I don't know. Really, it's it's not been an extremely eventful morning, but there are a lot of squirrels. That is a good thing, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. 